Palm Trees and Power Lines is the fourth studio album by American rock band Sugar Cult. The album contains the MTV hits Memory and She's the Blade. This is the band's first album to feature Kenny Livingston on drums. Sugar Cult released their third album Start Static in 2001, which had two successful singles stuck in America and bouncing off the walls, through Ultimatum Music in the US and Epitaph Records in Europe. Drummer Ben Davis went to rehab and was replaced by lefty drummer Kenny Livingston in September 2002, Davis officially left the group by Thanksgiving. With Livingston's arrival, the group was impressed by his skill level and inspired the members to improve their own skills on their respective instruments. The band then rented a rehearsal room and spent each day working on new material, writing all of the songs that would later feature on their next album in less than two months. The band supported Start Static with two years of tours, running into February 2003. Pre-production was done at Studio 9 in Los Angeles, lasting for three weeks. Recording took place between March and June 2003 at Full Kilt Studio and Third Stone Recording in North Hollywood, California with Gavin McKillop producing the proceedings. From May to September, the group went on a number of tours across Japan and Europe, with mixing and further recording sessions sprinkled in between. John Nooney, Moro Ruby and Trent Sladen were the Pro Tools engineers during the sessions. West Sideman acted as assistant engineer at Third Stone Recording. Additional production was done by Pognota. Several friends contributed instrumentation or vocals, Tim Cullen of Summer Camp, Alan Johannes, Nuni and Ariel reached Shade of the Hippos. Mixing was split across a few people at different studios, Tom Lord Algie at South Beach Studio, She's the Blade, Crying, Memory, Back. To California and over, Mark Trombino at Chalice Recording Studios with assistance from Alan Mason. McKillop, and Evan Frankfurt. Brian Gardner mastered the recordings at Bernie Grudman Mastering in Hollywood, California. Musically, the sound Palm Trees and Power Lines has been described as pop-punk and power-pop, drawing comparisons to Blink-182. The title for the album was the result of DeSantis standing in the studio's back alley, look up at the skyline, where all he could see was palm trees and electrical lines. A view that Pognota saw as a combination of beauty and harsh reality coexisting. It is named after the scenery in California where the band members live. Retaining the format of Start Static, Palm Trees and Power Lines consists of several up-tempo rock songs with ballads placed throughout. All of the lyrics were written by Pognota, while all of the music was credited to Pognota and then the band. He would show a rough sketch of a song to the rest of the group, at which point they'd flush it out. The tracks talk about the preceding two and a half years of Pognota's life as a touring musician, touching on the theme of being a traveler, determination to return home provoked by a relationship, with psychological and social struggles. She's the Blade was written when Pognota was playing his guitar in his bedroom. He was noodling with a chord progression that he thought was reminiscent of a transcending keyboard part, which he had admiration for Elvis Costello's attempts at this, namely on his track Radio Radio. Pognota began singing melody lines over his chosen progression until he came up with the lyric She's the Blade and You're Just Paper, with the rest of the song falling into place afterwards. DeSantis visited Pognota and the pair worked on guitar parts, one of which eventually became a keyboard part that Reached Shade would play on the final recording. Early versions of the song included an intro guitar riff but was scrapped in favor of Livingston's Countin. Similarly the track used to have a middle section of 12 bars that Pognota referred to as bad classic rock, which was removed at McKillop's insistence. Crying was written over the course of six months, with Pognota only having a guitar riff for the pre-chorus and main chorus for a long period of time. He said the bridge section was reminiscent of U2, specifically the use of a floor tom to keep time, as heard on some U2 songs on their war album. He added a guitar solo to the track, three days prior to it being mixed. Though Pognota disliked it, McKillop kept it in the final mix. Colin is singing harmonies on the song, during the recording of this, and since he felt the ending was too sparse, Pognota came up with a lyric for the song's outro. Memory was first song finished for the album, dating at least a year prior to when they recorded it. Pognota wrote it about a person he met while touring in Boston, Massachusetts. During this time he had just gotten out of a relationship and was cautious about starting another. He began daydreaming about how a relationship with the person from Boston wouldn't work. He then picked up his guitar and started strumming chords, writing what would ultimately become memory. Pognota kept Worst December a secret for some time, he reasoned that as the lyrics were a bit confessional in regards to a relationship, he worried that his partner would find the lyric sheet and they'd have to confront our issues. The music of the track was influenced by Bright Life. 
A band from the group's hometown, who Pognoto applauded for the usage of open chords in their material. Livingston keeps time in the song using the edge of his tom, resulting in a clock-like ticking sound which gave the track a nice ambient space. It ties into one of the two lyrical themes, with the other about being away from home. Back to California, which had a similar structure to Stay Together for the Kids by Blink-182, was written about returning home from touring solely to break up with a partner. When Pognota showed the track to Livingston, the pair started talking about Jimmy Eat World's use of hand percussion, which found its way into the song's intro. It featured several stack vocal parts and call-and-response harmonies during the chorus, which Pognota heard when listening to Carpenter's albums during his childhood. During an off day in the first week of pre-production, Pognota arrived at the studio early and began playing drums while vocalizing melodies. He based this off a group Spoon, whose music arrangements revolved around the drums and vocals. He began singing what would become Destination Anywhere. When Livingston arrived at the studio the pair started fleshing out the remainder of the song. At the group's next practice session bassist Aaron Older came up with a riff that Pognota said was a mix between New Year's Day by U2 and several Motown tracks, while DeSantis added stabs in the vein of British mod music. Upon McKillop hearing it, he remarked it sounded like an excess, to which the band was all shocked in horror. The vocals for the track had to be re-recorded twice over as McKillop thought it needed to come across as intimate sounding, a Moog riff was added in the bridge. Champagne is about Pognota's relationship with the group's former drummer Davis. He started writing it before Davis's departure when he noticed how different Davis was acting since he became an alcoholic. It bounces between first and third person views, Pognota referred to it as the cars on steroids. It was the last track finished during recording. And was mixed by Trombino, which Pognota felt added a denser layer to the song that they hadn't thought about. What you say resulted from a in-the-moment jam session between Livingston and Pognota. It was compared to the Foo Fighters, the guitar riff specifically recalled the one heard in Breed by Nirvana. Over-existed as a verse section for a few weeks, Pognota didn't feel it was fleshed out enough to share with the rest of the band. When the band was recording drums, Pognota showed Livingston and McKillop a complete chorus section. The trio worked on it and planned to record it the following day, which by then they tracked it in 30 minutes. DeSantis suggested a rhythm break before the last chorus, which was then added to the track. Head up evolved out of an idea that was written backstage during a show while in Belgium. The opening act was playing on stage upstairs while Pognota was downstairs attempting to track the idea into his recorder. Unable to hear the key of the chords, he recorded a tiny bit and fleshed out the song during soundcheck with the rest of the band the following day. It talks about remaining positive when you're doing something that other people may not like, something that Pognota felt after dropping out of education to focus on music. The chord progression for Counting Stars existed for about two months, during this time Pognota was unable to come up with any melodies or lyrics. Pognota said he received test results from his doctor saying he was ill, only for further results nine days later to say he was okay. Between these results he wrote the lyrics to Counting Stars, which acted as an apology for anything I may have done wrong to hurt the world, people, friends. On the final recording, a friend of the band contributed what Pognota referred to as sounds with his guitar that sounded like animals dying. Closing track sign-off was written by Pognota as he sat in the end of his bed. He explained that partway through the making of the album he felt lonely, confused and sad while questioning his life. It was recorded in the back room at the studio solely by Pognota, with some overdubs from McKillop. On September 24, 2003, Sugar Cult mentioned on their website that their next album would appear in February 2004. Between October and December, the group embarked on a headlining U.S. tour with support from Story of the Year, Plain White Tees, Jackson and Denver Harbor. During the stint, they played a number of new songs from their forthcoming album. Partway through the excursion, on November 20th, the album's title Palm Trees and Power Lines was revealed. Prior to the tour taking place, an acoustic version of Memory was included on the Fearless Records Helm compilation Punk Goes Acoustic. On December 15th, the album was given an updated release date, March 2004. Following this, the group supported Good Charlotte on their UK tour, before supporting them again on a tour of Japan in January 2004. During the same month, the band filmed a music video for Memory. On January 15, the band signed to Fearless Records. In January and February, the band supported MXPX and Simple Plan on their co-headlining US tour. On February 25, the album's track listing was revealed. The music video for Memory was posted online on March 11, 2004. The song was released to radio on March 16, 
the CD single featured Blackout and an acoustic version of Memory. After being originally scheduled for release on March 9, Palm Trees and Power Lines was eventually released on April 13. The artwork continues the Californian theme of the title with an actress in front of the palm trees, and electrical lines that make up the album's namesake. Though DeSantis claimed it wasn't wholly a tribute to California, he explained that with the band frequently touring other countries you sort of have a concept of home, and the more you're gone, it becomes even more blurry. But it is home nonetheless. And California represents that for us. Ultimatum Music sold the rights to Palm Trees and Power Lines to Artemis Records, who partnered up with Fearless Records. Vocalist-slash-guitarist Tim Pognota explained they need a larger amount of label staff to handle the album, Ultimatum had downsized its operations while the group now worked with the same people at Artemis that had helped for Static Static. Epitaph wasn't interested in the album, after struggling to break the band in the UK-slash-Europe, resulting in Rico Disc handling the release for that region. The Japanese edition released through independent label Maximum 10, featured Blackout as a bonus track. The group had to cancel the first week of touring for the album due to Pugnota suffering from tinnitus. When touring restarted, the band did a round of acoustic shows, their headlining US tour continued into May, when they embarked on a Japanese tour. Following the release, the band performed on the Warped Tour between mid-July and mid-August. She's the Blade was released to radio on August 31st. The CD single featured a Mark Trombine mix of Destination Anywhere, a live version of Stuck in America, and the music video for She's the Blade. The computer-generated video sees the group acting as doctors and operating on a girl, Pugnota likened the clip to Weird Science. In October and November, the group supported Green Day on their headlining US tour. The group closed the year supporting Blink-182 on their European tour. The band headlined the US Take Action tour in February and March 2005, followed by another support slot for Green Day on their Japanese tour. They released their first video album, Back to Disaster, in November 2005, which featured footage from the previous few years of touring. Palm Trees and Power Line sold 22,000 copies, reaching number 46 on the Billboard 200. The album received mixed to favorable reviews from critics. Johnny Loftus of All Music gives a favorable review, concluding that Sugar Cult are thankfully more concerned with pleasing the crowd than making a statement. Punktastic characterizes. The album is one hell of a grower, a record that shows maturity without ever coming across as trite or predictable. The review goes on to call the album a fine record which, while not as anthemic and instant as its predecessor, is destined to be a surefire summer hit. All lyrics by Tim Pognota, all music by Pognota and Sugar Cult. She's the Blade, 259 Crying, 329 Memory, 346 Worst December, 337 Back to California, 407 Destination Anywhere, 351 Champagne, 256. What You Say, 239 Over, 324 Head Up, 356 Counting Stars, 338 Sign Off, 213 Japanese Bonus Track Blackout, 310 Personnel Per Booklet. Citation Sources. Thanks for watching.